Hey everyone, it's Rachel from My Denture Adventure. So today I thought I would talk a little bit about food. Um, I've had a ton of questions about that. So right after my surgery, um, like the first couple of days, I really didn't eat a whole lot. Even the first day of my surgery, they wanted me to keep taking ibuprofen for the pain. I was so swollen and my bottoms have never fit from day one which hopefully will get corrected soon, very soon. And even my tops are kind of big. Um, again, you've heard all my sagas. But anyhow, I couldn't even do an ibuprofen tablet. I actually did children's um, Tylenol, and that was a lifesaver because it was liquid, so I was able to, like, suck that down and it kind of just like dripped in my mouth for that first day but really I stuck to really really soft stuff but about a week and a half to two weeks in I realized that my eating was going to change and you know I, I did a whole video on um you know dentures and weight loss I definitely have lost a lot of weight about 25 pounds since I've had my surgery um obviously my face the contouring even of my face has changed a lot as you know things have shifted in the last eight months but today I wanted to talk about my two appliances that got me through the first at least three to four months honestly I still go to these quite often um, even now I'm eight months out and I still have to be very careful what I eat so I'm going to show you my two favorite appliances for when you get dentures. So I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see them. Excuse my, it's a little messy, but okay. So appliance number one is a food chopper. So this thing I got at Walmart, it's amazing. Um, it has like, you know, the, the guard on it for when you're storing it. It has the blades that come down that you can, you know, you just kind of hit it at the top and it chops up all your food. So that, that food chopper was amazing because uh, ground meat, chicken, um, anything like that. First, it had to be very, cooked very, very well. So it had to be in a slow cooker or it had to be boiled and it had to be soft, man. And then I would put it in that. So I'd take a hamburger and chop it up. Or I'd take roast and cook it in a slow cooker all day till it was like falling apart. And I'd chop it up into really small, fine pieces. So that chopper, I think, cost me less than 20 bucks. It's something I still use. I'd never really used it before I had my surgery, but I still find myself using it. So that was a huge help because I hit a point where my iron levels started to go low because I wasn't getting meat in me. I was just kind of eating like I wasn't eating enough protein. And so that is one thing that I would recommend you get pre-surgery if you haven't gotten this done yet. Get yourself a food chopper, whether it's an electric one or a handheld one, so that you can chop up meat so that you can get protein in you as soon as your body can tolerate it. So that would be my first appliance. My second appliance that I'd be like, uh, you need this. And honestly, this is one you could start using right out of the gate, depending on how you do is a blender. Most of you have blenders at your house. We actually did not have a blender. It's not something that we really use at our house, but it's something that, like I said, about a week and a half to two weeks in, I quickly realized, heck, I'm going to need a blender for a lot of things. So in my blender, I would make slushies. I would make smoothies. I would make milkshakes. Like I made all kinds of liquid drinks in my blender. I still do sometimes go to milkshakes and things like that because, you know, when you are going through this process, obviously, you know, your eating changes so much or for me it did. And I know, and I always preface it with this, everyone's journey is different. This was my journey, but I wasn't eating a lot of protein initially and I started to really feel it. I can lack B12 and iron a lot. Just, I have a natural deficiency to it. Um, so I had to be really careful. And so I found that 
eggs, like getting scrambled eggs and even chopping up the scrambled eggs a little bit with the chopper, so it was really fine. That was great. Egg bites were great that you can get in the store. Again, I chopped them up with the food chopper. Milkshakes, smoothies, slushies, like anything, anything that had milk or eggs or meat in it was protein based and it was helping me get protein and iron and things in my diet because I did not let, I tried the protein shakes and I know a lot of people will say get protein shakes right off the bat and they love them. I hated them. I tried them. I'm a very, 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 very picky eater. So for me, the key was meat, eggs, and dairy. Um, and I really relied heavily on those things. I still lost weight, but I had some weight that I was able to lose as you can see I'm not withering away or anything um, at this point but those are the two items that I would say if you are about to get this surgery make sure you have a blender and make sure you have a good food chopper because that will really help you with the process of relearning how to eat you know for me I'm not really looking forward I, I'm looking forward to finally getting permanence but I'm also not because I have been so used to not having a bottom um, because they can't get one to fit right and there's all these issues with it and I've just had to run around with it I know eating with the top and bottom is gonna feel very very different and it's I'm gonna have to relearn everything all over again you will learn through this process you have to relearn pretty much with every adjustment you have to relearn eating and talking and there's words that you could say and then you get a realign and you're like now I'm slurring you know a CH or an SH and I can't say it as well or I can't eat what it's harder to eat that type of food and it wasn't two weeks ago like everything's always evolving and changing as you go through this process you know, in the first couple of years. And so you just have to kind of embrace that and do the best that you can with that. Kind of come to grips, come to terms with it. But those are two appliances that I would say do not be without for sure.